You're, you're well known for, for laying out your, your ideas on what you, your theory, which is illusionism. Could you just simply, as simply as possible, kind of lay out what that, what that idea is and what you're, you're saying about consciousness with it? Yeah, well, I, I should say that this isn't, this is, this is my position in the sense that it's one that I um, endorse, but it's not my position in the sense of one that I invented. I mean, it's, it's essentially Dennett's position. Um, I, what I did was I coined the name, um, although Dennett had already used the, the, the term illusion in, in many places. I just added an ism to it. Um, but one thing I wanted to do actually with it was to, to try to... Um, it's useful to have a name. It focuses people's attention on something. It, 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 it's, it's, a, uh, it's a useful way, a useful hook to, 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 to get people into the debate. And I felt people had, although Dennett's work is widely respected and widely read, and um, he's one of the most influential, important um, philosophers of mine um, in the world, probably the most important, I still felt, I felt his ideas were often consciousness were often dismissed unfairly, and, I, and this upset me. Um, I felt that people didn't understand what he was saying, and they misunderstood. They 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 read very uncharitably, perhaps without realizing it, and dismissed his ideas. And I, I wanted to try, try in my little way to do something about that. So illusionism. Um, people who haven't read much of what I've written or what. And it's been think that I'm saying that consciousness is an illusion, that we're not really conscious. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we radically miss, or, or at least philosophers, many philosophers radically misconceptualize mis philosophers their, for consciousness. They have a bad theory of what consciousness is. Um, they conceptualize consciousness as something like, and then we, 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 straight away we get into metaphor, something like an inner show or an inner light that is somehow created by the physical brain, but is not, uh, ex, it's not the same as the physical brain, it's something, some extra feature of the brain beyond its physical features, something that you wouldn't find simply by examining its physical features that a neuroscientist wouldn't find. It's some, it's some extra private world that is only available to the person themselves from the first person perspective. It's not visible from third person perspective. It's a private world, something like a private show where all the properties that we ascribe to things around us in the world, colors and sounds and tastes and smells and so on, are, are, are presented in a private medium. As a, the private versions of these colors and the colors that we take to be around us are actually, what we're actually immediately aware of are private mental colors presented in a private mental world, the world of consciousness. And so it's what we're immediately aware of is this world of consciousness and the world around us is something like a, uh, an influence from that private mental world. So I'm, I'm caricaturing there, but that's, I'm gesturing at the idea. So consciousness is like, the notion of an inner show, it's one that, that Dennis has used a lot, or an inner light, a sort of, <laughs> are the lights on inside is a question that sometimes I ask. With, with, with a fish, if you see a fish that's struggling in pain, or struggling after being injured, you can certainly see how it's reacting to the injuries that it has. But then it's tempting to say, yes, but is there an inner world there where it, where the pain is actually presented to the consciousness of the fish or something? And it's very tempting to think that that's a question that you really can't settle by just studying fish or studying fish anatomy and fish fish um, um, uh, uh, fish, uh, fish brains. And I think that whole conception of consciousness um, is very tempting. And it's gesturing at something. I'm not saying that it's doing nothing, but I think it's wrong. I don't think that is really this private world of consciousness. I think that is an illusion. But it doesn't mean we're not conscious. It means consciousness, in the, when we talk about being conscious, having conscious experiences, doesn't involve that. I think it involves a much more direct kind of engagement with the world. When we're conscious, when I'm conscious of things around me, that's not 
through the medium of being conscious of some private mental world in my head. It, no, I'm directly conscious of the things around me. I'm directly locked onto the colors and shapes and sounds of things around me. I don't, it's not filtered through some private inner, inner medium of mental qualities. And, because after all, then if it were, then we'd have the question of how am I related to that mental? If, the, if we think there's a problem as to how I experience the world around me, and that it has to be presented in, uh, through a mental world. Well, how am I aware of the mental world? Does that have to be presented through another mental world? And it's not really solving anything. What I think it is doing, though, this talk about a private mental world, about phenomenal consciousness, I think it's gesturing at something about the nature of our psychology and the nature of our perceptual processes and the, the introspective access we have to them. I think it's gesturing at something. It's not based on nothing at all. But it's, it's the, and I think this is the, the right word, it's, it's, it's like an illusion. Illusions are not based on nothing. Uh, if, if a, 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 an optical illusion is not based on nothing. There's something there, there's some arrangement of shapes and colors and lines and whatever that creates a certain effect, say, of movement, where there isn't actually any movement. There's something there, but it's producing an impression in you that is misleading. That's what I think is happening with consciousness. There's certainly all kinds of st stuff there, but it's producing an impression on us in the sense of disposing us to form a certain theory of what's happening that is wrong. Okay, so it's, we are misled about our own, um, the nature of our own minds in that way. Um, so that's, this, that's essential. So, so it's, it's the view that consciousness in this specific philosophical sense is illusory, is not real. But it's not this claim that we're not conscious, that we don't see and hear and feel and you know, feel pain. It's a theory about what it is to see and hear and feel and be in pain. So.